We've moved beyond mere tension between Ukraine and Russia into open violence in multiple corners of the country. First, Ukrainian forces are finally pushing uh, forward in a major assault against pro-Russian forces around the area of uh, Slovyansk. Uh, there's at least three dead as of this morning. Those numbers almost certainly higher now later on in the day. And in addition, two Ukrainian helicopters were shot down and two of their crew members killed on Friday morning. That's uh, according to both sides. And of course, these are being shot down, um, heat-seeking missiles and things like that. These, these are not simply militia members. Uh, in fact, the Ukrainian Secret Service is uh, calling them highly skilled foreign military men. And it's scary because we've got deaths on multiple sides now. And of course, uh, Putin and the Russian government is moving in. And this is exactly what they wanted. They say that the offensive, referring to the Ukrainian counteroffensive against those pro-Russian forces, effectively destroyed the last hope for the implementation of the Geneva Agreements. Um, and now, referring to those pro-Russian forces, whatever you want to call them, uh, the Ukrainian interior minister says, we are ready to negotiate with protesters and their representatives, but for terrorists and armed separatists, there's only punishment. And so that's in the east of Ukraine. Uh, those government buildings have been taken over by the pro-Russian forces. Uh, they are still held by those forces, but Ukraine is trying to push them out of the city. All right. So a couple of notes here. Number one, uh, I'm amused by Putin saying this ends the Geneva agreements. You never started them in the first place. Well, that's, I mean, that's more than just amusing. That's exactly what, like John said, that's exactly what they wanted to have yeah. happen so that they right. could blame the other side for breaking the Geneva agreements. The Geneva agreements wouldn't have been necessary had Putin yeah. not done what Putin did. Yeah. And you, you Ukraine is screwed in either case. Before this offensive, uh, Russia had been telling Ukraine you need to move all of your forces out of the east and southeast of Ukraine so that presumably the, the pro-Russian, the Russians in eastern Ukraine could continue to occupy and, and gain more territory there. But they didn't do that. They pushed in, and that also gives Putin uh, an excuse to possibly use those forces he's been massing on the eastern Ukrainian border against them. And, so, you know, look, the Russian aggression is what necessitated the Geneva Agreements, uh, but then he never uh, did any of the things that were agreed upon. So it was just a stalling mechanism uh, to find an excuse to attack, which... Uh, or, or Danny, I don't, it's not so much a stalling mechanism, just a... a, a a, a PR mechanism yeah. yes. to make it appear that you're willing to talk and then, oh, look, whatever. We gave it a shot. Things broke down. Now we have to protect ourselves. Right. Yeah. Now, look, there's propaganda on both sides and certainly blame on both sides, but there is a clear aggressor here. And if you're wondering, hey, is it fair for John to say, look, let's stop calling them pro-Russian forces and just call them Russian forces. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely fair. And let me explain. shot down a couple of helicopters. Exactly. Yeah. So now every once in a while I'll have somebody uh, who's on the Russian side send me pictures of like a little old lady pushing against the Ukrainian tank and be like, see, that's not Russian forces. Where did the little old lady get the surface-to-air missile? <laughs> okay. There was no surface-to-air missiles among the pro-Russian protesters that had innocently gotten out there. No, no, those are Russian troops. They shot down two helicopters with, you know, uh, service to air missiles, which clearly protesters do not have. Yeah. So there's no question that they were planning this, and they had been planning it for a long time. I've done many stories on that in the past, and here now they are executing it. And Putin is saying, oh, you know, you should get your troops out of eastern and, and southeastern Ukraine. Well, your troops are there. Mm -hmm. the, if, if the Ukrainians remove their troops, they would basically be saying, go ahead, you've taken it, right? Yeah. And now, Ben, you have an update, right, on number Yeah, of yeah, the killed? number, we're, we're at like probably 38. Obviously, the story is changing uh, uh, as, as it happens, but uh, that offensive launched by the Ukraine against what they're calling separatist forces um, in, in Slovyansk, assuming that I'm pronouncing that right, um, that 31 people were killed in a fire in a building. Yeah, we've got a that, few more details on and that, And then actually. plus the seven that were killed as part of the helicopter being shot down, killing two crew members. Authority said another seven people also died, three separatist gunmen, two soldiers, two civilians. So the number right now, again, tentatively, is that the number killed today in fighting is near 40. Yeah, so we had, a, we had a couple of people off in the east of Ukraine around Slovyansk. Down in the southwest of Ukraine, we also have, in Odessa, uh, police said 38 people had choked to death on smoke or were killed when jumping out of windows after the trade union building there was set on fire. 
Um, we don't know exactly how at this point that happened, but it seems like some sort of pro-Russian forces committed and, and terror in right, Odessa. That, that fire that I mentioned was... As you're was seeing it, across uh, was the, the hundreds of miles apart from each other, so right. they're operating in, in vastly different parts the of the country. The AP story I was reading on came out of Slovyansk. What you're talking about is, you're, you're correct, John, happened in Odessa, and nothing had happened in Odessa before. Like, everything was... Mm -hmm. Calm there. So, and what they want these pro-Russian forces is for this to spread, obviously. Right. And so to get from one place to another, and then th I think that that's the die that that uh, Putin wanted to cast from the beginning. Yeah. And, and look, the, the guys who are on the Russian side of this uh, propaganda war, and, and you, you, I'm sure the the viewers earnestly don't believe they're part of a propaganda campaign, and and maybe the word terrorist and the word propaganda are leading in some way. But anyway, you slice it. Uh, the Ukrainian forces are not inside of Russia. Russian forces are inside of Ukraine. Yeah, so just do a reality check yeah. on yourself. That's what's happening here. And Russia has, by the way, done this brilliantly. They come in in a stealth way, take over the buildings, uh, government buildings and police buildings without much of a fight, and then Ukraine is forced to respond. And when they do, they say, look at these tanks they rolled in up. Poor us, what do we? And they take a couple of pictures with grandmas pushing against tanks, and they go, and as we've reported to you in the past, they get, they are told, we have seen their instructions, they are told, grab someone with a Ukrainian accent, put them up front, and yeah. pretend that they're representing you, when in fact they have Russian-made equipment from the Russian army that is uniform through all these different yeah. cities. It has been a brilliant campaign to take over a huge part of Ukraine, but let's recognize what it is. And, and let's also recognize what has begun now. This, mm -hmm. the, I believe the war has begun. So we, we don't know how far this war will spread, and we're all scared to death about that, but Ukraine and Russia are now in a war, and that's crazy.